Yeah, we're back with another kiss of uh, <laughs> Welcome, this is uh, Nablime against the Shambler on Repulsion. Uh, Shambler's trying out Protoss after the tech crunch, and Nablime is just Nablime. Hey, he recently sent in some money for the prize pool, and he said he'll win it back anyway, which I think is pretty ballsy and epic, so cool guy. Prize pool pal role acquired on the Discord server. And yeah, we uh, are indeed going to be... Uh, trying to do an event this Saturday, so I guess I should mention that. Uh, we, we are going to try to go back into a schedule of every other week we run a tournament, so we'll see what people think of that. Uh, it'll be a weekend tournament. We'll see, uh, you know, ideally, we you know the scheduling and the timing and such will make it so that we can do it you know, uh, all in one day or something like that, but uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Now, Shambler is off to the races with a scout after dropping his pylon. It should be noted that the pylon itself did not receive any adjustments or changes. The tech crunch that we are currently seeing for the Protoss simply reduces the sheer number of production facilities that are available to them, and thus consolidates a lot of their unit roster onto the same structures. Uh, so we lost six structures in total. If you're not familiar with all of them, you can always check the patch notes. It's going to be a Hydrock Den in the meanwhile. This structure takes about 50 seconds to make. The same is now true for the Lattice, as well as the Gateway. Uh, the time costs of a lot of the Protoss structures, as well as some resource costs, were adjusted in the wake of this change. So that is important to note. And uh, I guess another thing that's important to note while we wait for the action to get underway is, of course, big smoochy time for those of you who donate to the coffee, which is linked in the bottom right-hand corner. I do appreciate it. And so does Veek. So now that that sponsored sip is over with, let's see what Shambler decides to go for. He's only harvesting minerals, so I'm assuming, yeah, obviously the first one is going to be a vassal. That's probably going to be used to re-scout the Zerg player to see what unit is coming out, what the first uh, unit is from the Hydrath den. It's not Hydrock anymore. I misspoke earlier. But, you know, we'll see. It could also cause some harassment. Uh, there is no uh, unit coming, actually, right now. So this timing is a little bit uh, precipitous here, uh, where the vassal was initially warding off the scout. That might give a little bit of time for uh, Nablime to train a unit, but he's actually not got enough money. So now he's going to go for the Hydralisk. I think the vassal will get here in time to start tickling some workers. If you're going up against this as Zerg, um, obviously, you know, the vassal itself doesn't do a whole lot of DPS, but... Oh, it looks like... Okay, Shamber was actually delaying this a little bit. So this is going to give Nablime time. He has his macro hatch over here. As you can see, there's no more Larvosk Seasiant, and he does have his Hydra uh, out and ready, as well as a second one nearly complete. So the overwhelming Vassal count will not necessarily be achieved anytime soon, and we will be able to see whether Shambler can make something happen despite that, because obviously this is going to be turned into a Spraith. So uh, yeah, if you're also kind of new to the project, then you should be aware that uh, all of our names are very different, right? we got Drolith instead of Drone. Hydralisk is still the same, but we basically decided to go for uh, consistent suffixes for certain things. So like utility is always Leth, production is Osk, and then you've got a couple of different things like Hydrith and such for tech nodes or whatever. That's like implying what units are being made from it. And then obviously uh, Ith is uh, the suffix for defenses and such, specifically. So you'll always see that and Seasient instead of Colony. So we do now have six and make it seven vassals. Vassals do have a unique behavior where when they die, they proc a an effect called Vengeful Ascension for Protoss, where they will essentially avenge the corpse of the vassal itself, and that will increase the movement speed, but not attack rate, of nearby allies. So you can see there, they started to move a little bit faster for a short period of time. Uh, when that last one died. So he traded two vassals for a Hydra. That's okay in terms of money. Um, well, actually, I mean, each vassal, I believe, is uh, 50 minerals, so it's a little bit favored for uh, Nablime, but obviously the Hydras do cost gas, so it's a little bit distinct there. Uh, the Droleth is still here, causing some shenanigans to happen, but I think maybe uh, Nablime is totally fine allowing Shambler to expand in this situation. Um, how, however, as he's massing up some of these, he's not going for Izeracores, which is a, a ground-based unit that can deal with uh, swaths of enemies in this particular case. The Focus Fire is here from Shambler, but you can see the, the vassals themselves are very brittle. So he's trading okay here. It looks like that was six or seven vassals for three Hydras. Again, not the most cost-efficient, but it's okay. It, the most important thing that it's doing is stopping the blind from expanding. And since Shambler is just pumping non-stop vassals out, and Nablime is not getting a different set of compositions, he's not really achieving any critical mass. He might start to do that now, 
because he's starting to exit his base, and this is where he can start to build up from behind it. His focus fire is not really all that there, so even though he kills four vassals, he ends up losing two hydras. He didn't really micro that army whatsoever, so that, there's an element of improvement there. But again, no Izirakors means that the vassals can scale up a little bit better, because obviously hydras are all single target, whereas Izirakors have a, a passive called Crushing Tide, now on the Tosgrilisk as well for our tier three Zerg enjoyers, uh, where basically it, it multi-targets and each attack bounces once. So it can hit uh, two targets and uh, each one of them will be uh, bouncing to another target afterwards. Now there's only two Hydras leading the charge here, so they could get picked off if they're not careful. But meanwhile, two Wardens are up. I don't think two Wardens is enough to immediately by themselves dissuade an attack, especially as they're only now warping in. Uh, this could be a just a prime opportunity that Shambler is uh, trying to avoid, and Nablime is trying to capitalize upon. So one of the Wardens does go down. There were some Manifolds taking some shots over here. And that is just going to allow the Hydralisks to remain afoot for now. Units on the high ground benefit from increased range, if you're not aware. So that's another thing that's a uh, commonality within CMBW. You'll often see that being used to defend easy. Now, this Warden is still taking pot shots here and there. Some more Hydras were streaming in, but it looks like this is going to cause Nablime to call it off. And instead, he's going to transition into a much more aggressive macro-oriented fest where he's going to go ahead and take a fast third base, trying to reclaim some of the lack of economic benefit that he's had. A third Lattice has been added, and he's starting to just pump out non-stop Manifolds this time. This is his decision against the Hydras of Nablime. And he can indeed pressure with this army. So it wouldn't surprise me one bit if uh, this is something that ends up moving across the map. Manifolds are fairly quick, but they also have their own uh, host of durability issues. Nothing out of the Lattice is really that durable. Uh, you can sometimes get stuff like golems and idols now are on the Lattice. They used to be on a separate structure. That was one of the tech crunch things that occurred. But the main thing that you can look at for the... Uh, the golem really is that that's the most durable thing that you're going to get. It looks like there's going to be some more vassals being trained in the meanwhile, as well as some, you know, the surviving five. They are going to go ahead and be moved out. Shambler sticking to the lattice, not interested in moving out. And a this is going to be the sixth hatch. So that's a lot of production out here for Nablime. Maybe uh, interested mostly in staying at tier one for a good while. The vassals do get slapped as they spot the third base hatch, and that is fine for Nablime, but it might be a spot that Shambler wants to specifically deny. We do see a Skither Core out fairly fast and somewhat durable melee or a short range air unit that can sort of move around the map and scout out for Nablime, confirming that Shambler is still only on two bases, or if he's not, he's got a hidden base somewhere very far away. I also like that we have the... Uh, Oh yeah, he's, also, he's actually going to scout out the Ardent Authority. So this is a, a more advanced robotic structure that has access to the Acantor and Architect now. Uh, but otherwise, ju just the, the bog standard, analog, uh, positron, and servitor. So you may remember those units if you've been playing around with the project for a while. We do see some Izera cores out now, or at least being trained. That's good. This is actually turning into a Circuit instead of a Spraith, which is kind of curious. Uh, maybe not expecting more vassal play. But he does the Hydras here for defense, so in the temporary area, it's okay. Not banking too much gas. Not actually harvesting any out of his natural. And not really saturating his worker line over here just yet either, so... Saturation is not as significant in CMBW for... Uh, like, it, it's not as significant to split workers from one base to another, uh, as in Stock Starcraft, because you have more efficiency per worker. The fall off only happens after you double saturate a node. So if you go from two workers per node to three, that's when you're gonna hit a saturation deficit. But we'll talk about that a little bit later because this circuit is under fire. A Little bit of a sloppy angle of attack and the vassals are now here to try to focus it down. So there goes the circuit. The manifolds are gonna be dealing the bulk of the damage here. The Azir core is not so long for this world, but there are some more and a whole host of Skither cores has emerged to try to hunt these ones down. Everything here can attack both ground and air for Shambler, but there's just way more Zerg than there is Protoss in this area. So he's gonna to have to rely on having some sort of response and he went for an embassy plus an Akantor. So he does not have uh, what really is going to be necessary to ward off the Skithrakors here. I'm very worried about 
you know, how fast and how much of a, like, how quick Nablime is to pull the trigger here. Because if this engram doesn't finish, or, you know, just in general, if there's not a whole lot of a response here, I think these skits can, they can't threaten to end the game, but they can do a lot of damage. You know, they can clear out the warden, they can clear out the uh, engram. Instead, they're just going to get zoned away, maybe respecting the simulacrum a little bit too much. There's no armor pin on that, so it's only dealing five damage a pop. But, you know, there's a fair number of them, right? There's ten. Vassals were also synced up, and now we have a Positron out. Positrons do create uh, explosions as their projectile travels, so they can do a lot of AoE. A wounded Schizocore is going to go ahead and wander on in. It looks like the Acantor is either already out on the map and I'm blind, or... No, it, went, it moved to the front line. Okay, that's actually kind of clever, as far as using it is concerned. Here come the Vassals to try to harass that. Okay, that's going to negate that movement. And we do just now have the Iral Iris going down for Nablime. Moving into tier two. He is taking a base in the top left as well, and he is pretty good presence in a couple of other spots, you know, watching the other likely expansion locations. Uh, this one being the only one that's not currently free, but he just scouted it, so he doesn't feel too bad about allowing Shambler to do that. And because he spotted the Envoy, and of course, I think he will have noticed that the Acantor is there, uh, at the very least, he'll see the Envoy. And so that's why you see more defenses going down around the mineral lines, including circuits, to try to take out the Acantors before those plasma shells can rain Hellfire onto the worker count. But the Vassals are, once again, moving over here, trying to snipe out some Kagrins. The Azirakors are going to go ahead and uh, ward those off. Again, the Crushing Tide allowing them to bounce their targets a lot. I don't know if this Acantor, or this Envoy, rather, was seen by the Azirakor, uh, or if it was something that you even would have noticed on the minimap or anything. Uh, these vassals are not going to be too long for this world, and the envoy has idled at the low ground base there. So, a little bit of moving shots here as the vassals try to take advantage of their momentary uh, mobility. But while this is all going on and Nablime is veritably distracted, the Akantor has not been dropped. So, uh, Shambles is actually trying to make use of these vassals, and that's fine in a sense, but, you know, it does feel like he might be... Waiting, you know, a little bit too much here. Now, here comes the Envoy. It is going to go down immediately. And there are two circuits, you know, taking pot shots off. It looks like a bunch of workers instantaneously getting transferred over. And so he's not even... He will kill the circuit, but that's about it. That, that was a weird interaction, huh? The Plasma Shell actually just outright executed it. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I'll have to investigate that. Uh, that's a bug. So what is supposed to happen when you lose a structure in, for that's mutated is you're supposed to be able to... Uh, get the old one back. So if this Spear Tith, which is a tier 2 anti-air, or Scortrith, which is a tier 2 anti-ground, dies, you're supposed to get the original one back. That seems like there's uh, some kind of error there. So this Nexus ends up uh, finishing, and the Scribe is being slapped to death. Uh, and that's just going to be a momentary inconvenience, as a couple of more units are going to stream out. The Engram is a very powerful anti... like, basically all-purpose tower. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up getting a lot of smacks. And, uh, yeah, Argosy. Okay, so we've got a third Ardent Authority coming down and an Argosy. That'll be interesting to see. Still only on two functional bases so far. Nablime having double the worker count and getting a Mutath Spire now as well as his Quazeth. So this is looking pretty good for our Zerg player, I gotta say. He doesn't have the most in terms of military. Uh, he actually has less military than his opponent. But the quality of his economy is so vast, and he's starting to get those advanced strains that at this point, I really doubt that he's going to end up losing. Um, he, he definitely looks like he's in the, the driver's seat here. He's got his back that out. That used to be called the Gorgle Swamp. Some skits are over here harassing this area, once again claiming the map control and, you know, stifling some of those forces as well. I don't know how big that army actually was, but, you know, a small portion of it severed. And we do have some Tier 1 units, as well as here come the Bactalisks. They are moving around and seeing what they can accomplish. I'm not so sure what Shambler's response is going to be to the Bactalisks, because they will shred through, I think, everything here. Positrons will stay alive a little bit, but Bactalisks do have that, uh, especially with the cliff advantage, yeah, they have the bounce potential, and there are a large number of them here. So yeah, unfortunately for Shambler, he loses his entire right side flank, and over here, he's even taking some damage as well, incurring some losses. Simulacra are splitting, but, you know, they're kind of being left behind in the response, so not a whole lot of value being gained there. And now we see a forward hatch just to spread the Kagra, try to get more buildable space and more map control, as well as more production, which is always useful. So my Zero Core is falling, but, I mean, he'll, he'll take that trade pretty much any day of the week. A whole host of Zerg is on the way. 
And we do have some idols and some Positron, so good splash damage is possible over here to, to use. Unfortunately, though, I'm not 100% convinced that it's uh, going to be nearly enough. You got some Vorbs, you got some Zeths, but uh, aside from that, you know, you're mostly going to be seeing, I think, the Zerg just start to take control of the map. Now, at the same time, there are some Engrams up here, and this one, at the very least, to the north of the Nexus, will provide some value uh, peering down on this side. It'll, it will have cliff advantage, right? Buildings also benefit from that. A Didact is out for some general map control, but... Uh, you'd have to get a really good stasis shot off here to make a huge difference. Uh, and even then, you'd need to be able to capitalize on it. We do have a whole host of Vorbs being mutated. Uh, okay, you, you stun some units. I don't know if it's going to be too significant. Uh, there is no detection out here, but obviously units that are under the cloak field decloak when they attack, right? There's no such thing as permanent cloak anymore. That's a pretty good stasis. It actually locks out one of the Matroleths, a, a caster unit for the... Uh, Zerg that also allows any unit around the Matroleth to benefit from ensnaring brood, which means that they apply ensnare on their attacks, basically. And you can see it's actually being quite effective. The uh, Engram is not able to get shots off onto the Bacalisks because of the front line that's constantly being reinforced by the Vilgaleths, spawning Rillarokors off of the corpses. So that is working very, very well to prevent the Engrams from doing too much damage. Their projectile now intercepts, basically, as soon as it hits something. And so it can be heavily uh, alleviated by expendable units or indeed summoned units like the Rilla Rokor. Now at this stage, though, with the third base gone, what does Shambler do? What can he do? He, he needs to maybe try to think about, you know, forcing the this army to not... Well, maybe dividing this army, right? There's not really um, kill pressure here for the second base, but... There's also not really that many resources here. He's starting to get an Empyrean. He's going to send out his Vassal Fleet to try to do, incur some damage over here. And actually, you know, there's only two unupgraded Spraiths. Those are Tier 1 base defenses. This number of Vassals, 23 Vassals, that can definitely do a lot of damage here. And, uh, you know, 23 and me, lol. But he's not even going to go there. He's going to instead pivot over towards this frontal area, which also doesn't have that many defenses, but does have Bactalisks. And Bactalisks are not what you want to fight with Vassals, let me tell you. So this is not going to go well. This is uh, not his best target selection. Now, closing the distance here is good because it does allow the Bactyls to... Uh, it stops them from getting as many bounces as they would otherwise. Or really any bounces, actually, if you get close enough. Some uh, instantaneous Vilgaletts uh, are going to go ahead and reconstitute the Zethercore corpses into really Rokors. There's not really an engram over here, though, so not as much efficacy happening over here. As long as you stand in this field, by the way, you're going to get some healing as well, so that kind of helps advance the motions. Uh, but it's not being super consequential here. There is the one Empyrean. It does have really good armor, so the Bactylists are going to have difficult times clearing it. Uh, but the rest of the ground army has been whittled down quite a bit. And even though this army didn't get kills onto the enemy forces for Nablime, like even though it didn't actually end the game, it was still pretty significant in cutting down maybe like half of Shambler's ground army, maybe more, judging by the rubble. Um, and some of that rubble is going to be invisible now because of the fact that the corpse was consumed. So you should remember that as well. Obviously, the Matrable Nest is out. That's where you get the Matroleths from. But we're starting to see Mutas. I'm not seeing any other units. And we do have actually have the Double Didact Strat recalling into the base. Unfortunately for Shambler, this is not going to be a very crippling loss. He even has a Scribe over here as well. And some units seem to be uh, confused. Bad Rally or something. Meanwhile, the uh, Empyreans are tasked onto some other units. The, the Mutas do get chewed up by all the AoE. Uh, but they blocked a lot of the Empyrean shots because air units do block those units. And the fact that this attack was not very successful means Shambler will GG. And well, that's our first match on the new economy, and or not new economy, the new tech crunch stuff, as well as obviously Zerg received a lot of changes for this. So it was really cool to see that. Uh, Nablime did need to take a lot of bases in order to build so many advanced strains, mostly the Bactylisks in that case, but also some Vorvs. Uh, I really liked that he combined a lot of units and he used spellcasters like the Matroleth to get a decided advantage to break the position of the Engram. And it's cool to see that that's actually how that particular unit works out. Uh, the Vilgaleth is probably a little bit overloaded, I admit. Maybe it shouldn't have the, uh, the healing field at the end, for example. But it seems pretty cool. And also, it seems like something that you can focus down pretty easily. Uh, maybe it should be a little bit bigger or something. It seems like it's focusable, though. Uh, so I really like, quite like that. And on the Shambler side, it does feel like he stuck to the same strategy for a very long time uh, with the Vassal spam into Manifolds. And when he saw all the skits, you know, he had already gone for the Ardent Authority, 
So his Akantor drop was not very effective at that point because it ended up getting scouted and his opponent had a lot of air units. So it felt like maybe it was a little bit unlucky there. He hadn't done really that much scouting. He scouted via attacking. Uh, and that's another thing that you can build with the embassy is you can go for the embassy for witnesses. So it is still another thing that you can do to get that scouting intel. But he went the ardent authority first and then used a unit that wasn't guaranteed to be super impactful. It's hard to think to yourself that an Akantor drop won't be impactful, but we saw that just based on the way that the rest of the game had played out, Nablime was capable of coming back from that one base deficit that he was at, where he hadn't expanded for a while, and he just threw down a macro hatch and just played it out, played it out. you know, that, pretty cool stuff to see that Zerg is still functional in that sense. But, you know, Shambler still has some cards to play. Uh, there will be more games casted in the near future from this set. So stay tuned, you know, drop a sub if you're not already, and I'll see you on the next video where we'll see if Shambler can bite back.